think of mothers, these images may come to mind. But my guests today say these are the kind of images they are assaulted with daily when they log into Facebook. This is Mom Rachel. Now, Rachel admits she was a party girl when she was younger and often wasn't around for her own child. Her daughter, Abby, is now 18 years old and says she was basically raised by her grandmother, Dixie, because Rachel was out living the high life. But now Rachel is in her late 30s, married and claims that things have changed. Her mother, Dixie, disagrees. She says Rachel is still bar hopping and stays out all night like a single 21-year-old. My daughter is a selfish bitch. Abby's whole childhood has been without a mother. Drugs and alcohol got in the way. They've always come first. Even after spending a year in prison, her addiction never stopped. She's very narcissistic. Rachel would go out and have a couple of drinks and leave Abby alone with no dinner. Rachel has always felt entitled. And she's very materialistic. Rachel's an extremely manipulative person. She's always been able to play the victim and play it very, very well. She knows how to get what she wants out of me. She's come to me, Mom, I can't pay my rent. Mom, I can't pay my electric bill. Like, we've paid legal fees. We have easily spent close to $400,000 on Rachel since she turned 21. For some reason, Rachel has some really deep hatred for me. My last text from her told me what a despicable human being I was. I was a Rachel tells me that I have no friends, that I have to buy my friends. She tells me that I am the worst mother there ever was, that I've never done anything for her. I don't know that I even want her back in my life. Well, so at this point, you are raising your granddaughter. Yes. She's living with you. Yes, she is. And your daughter objects to that. Very much so. And why are you raising her? Why is she not with her mother? Um, because her mother can't raise her. Her mother. Why? I don't know why. She doesn't want to be a mother. You say she's a narcissist. Very much so. You think she, and she's been a drug addict. Yes. You think she is now today? Uh, she is today. You think she's actively a drug addict today? I know she's actively on Suboxone. Okay, do you think she is drinking? I know she is. So she's taking Suboxone and drinking? Yes, sir. Okay, you think she's out partying? Yes, sir. Well, let's hear Rachel's side of this. I mean, let's hear what she has sure. to say. Sure. Uh, she claims her mother is so controlling, she cannot stand the fact that Rachel is loving life despite being cut off financially by Dixie three years ago. Take a look. My mom is narcissistic, controlling, and evil. She's just got pure venom. My mom's voice sounds like a demon to me. It sounds awful. My mom has this air of superiority about her. She's up here. Everybody else is down here. My mom is mean and nasty to people. I call my mom a lot of names, but she just gets me so angry. I don't know why my mom judges me for what I do. I'm not this social butterfly party animal that my mom thinks I am. I can't tell you the last time I was in a club. I don't even really own dresses. I'm the most boring person. I do not use any kind of drugs. I'm not a freaking alcoholic. I don't even know why I defend myself. In my mom's head, I'm always gonna be an alcoholic. So you know what? I was definitely not a perfect mom, but I tried the best that I possibly could. My mom acts like she won. She acts like Abby picked her over me. My mom needs to get her act together before I'm going to be in her life again. Your mother says that the reason that you are not and cannot be a mother is that you are a drug addict, an alcoholic, and mentally ill, that you are just too narcissistic to be a mother. And by that, I think she means that you are just so self-absorbed and so self-involved that you can't possibly be focused on someone else. I'm wondering how she knows that because I haven't been in her life. Well, let's not talk about how she knows it. Let's talk about whether it's true or not. No. I watched your videotape piece, and you are an adult, and you chose on national television in a tape piece to flip off your mother with an obscene gesture, which seemed to me to lack a little bit of impulse control and be highly immature. 
I thought I was just talking one on one with the producer. Okay, you I didn't, didn't notice that there was a camera well, on a tripod with lights in front of you? I didn't know when it was rolling, when it wasn't. Well, if you're sitting in front of it and the lights are on, there's a pretty good chance it's rolling. Okay. This is good. You know, these are on, by the way. Right. Okay. This one over here is on. And okay. That one out there, all these are on. Okay. You're on camera now, so okay. just so you know. Okay. She says you are a narcissist, are you? Absolutely not. It's interesting, you described her. She said the reason she can't get along with you is that you are a complete and total narcissist. <laughs> okay. You find it funny? I find it hilarious. I find it tragic. I find it tragic, but it's, I do find it interesting that. that both of you describe each other the same way. Your problem with her is that she's not a stable mother. Absolutely. And, and she I hasn't provided know, a stable home. I don't know so much that she's narcissistic as she is totally self-absorbed. It's what Rachel needs, what Rachel wants. Well, that's a wants. distinction without a difference, but yeah, the, really. the point is you say she was not a stable mother and did she, not provide a stable home. Never. Never. Okay, and we'll look at that in a few minutes because I think there has been a lot of instability there. Um, and I look at legacies, are things passed from generation to generation. Were you stable as a mother? Oh, I think I was always stable as a mother. I wasn't stable in relationships. Uh -huh. How many times were you married? Four. So you're in your fourth I'm marriage? I'm on my fourth, yes. Hmm. And final. So a lot of changes. Um, a lot in of changes. Well, the, uh, the first time I married, I was only 19. But a lot of changes in her life along the way. Not really. She only had two. I mean, my husband came along when she was 19. He always treated her like she was his daughter. My husband before that came along when she was four. I went to 12 schools growing up. Just from kindergarten to 12th grade. That's not true. 12 different schools. That's not true. That's well, not was it true. 10? Well, no, Eight? she went to Catholic school. Nine? For, no, she went to Catholic school while, the whole time we were in New York until the very last year, and we were in New York for eight years. Uh -huh. So did she change schools a lot? No, no. So she just lied? She came, she just lied. She, I we can moved name down them all right here. now. Okay, when, let's do that. Okay, I started at Christian school. In, that was pre-K. Okay, pre-K. Pre then I went to St. Mark's in New York. I went to Resurrection in New York. I went to Good Shepherd in New York. I went to PS52. I went to Shell Bank Middle School. I went to Sheep's Head Bay High School. Okay, why did you go to well, so many different Catholic schools? I don't care why. That's Catholics. like eight she's added. Well, why did right you away? go to so many different Catholic schools? You tell me. I was no, a she kid. She kept getting in trouble. I just remembered Catholic schools. Okay, school. so she didn't did not lie. You said, that. yes, she lied. She didn't lie. You just didn't remember. I didn't remember that there were four different Catholic schools. Uh -huh. Wow, interesting. You didn't remember the school that your children went to. Okay. Well, I'm All right, next, we're going to meet Rachel's 18-year-old daughter, Abby, and find out why she says her mother is a bad mom why she refuses to live with her anymore. And we're gonna find out if this legacy is something that's passing from generation to generation to generation. We'll be right back. My mom is very self-centered. My mom did not know how to raise me. She was never home. She was out with her friends, with her husband. She recently told me I get the trophy for a worse child. I just can't stand being in the same room as her. When an all-new Dr. Phil. I'm not going to feel better till he's dead. A troubled child. He has been diagnosed with 18 mental illnesses. A tormented family. This is where Steve decided to hold his brother underwater. Living in fear. Do you think he could hurt one of his siblings? And in over their heads. I just can't imagine my sister treating this child like that. That's tomorrow. Those priorities have always been screwed up. I get bills here for her all the time that are passed to Rachel is always immaculate. Her hair is always done. Her nails are always done. She keeps up her massage membership, and yet the bills don't get paid. Well, Grandma Dixie says her daughter Rachel drove her daughter Abby away because of her bad parenting and partying. Abby says she is fed up with Rachel not being there as a mom. I pretty much hate my mom. My mom is very self-centered. She is a narcissist. My mom feeds off drama and chaos. My mom has called me many names before. She would call me a spoiled brat, tell me I'm only living with my grandparents because they have money. She recently told me I get the trophy for a worse child. My mom did not know how to raise me. 
she was never home. She was out with her friends or with her husband. I never had any boundaries. She never cared what I did. I felt really alone. My mom dresses like a 16 year old. She loves to show skin. People just look at her like, how old are you? What are you wearing? My mom posted a picture of her dressed up as Miley Cyrus on Halloween in the little bear costume. She posted a picture of her on a stripper pole. My mom posted a picture of a bunch of drinks on the table and her caption was, I might not have my underwear, but I do have my martinis. The most embarrassing one is her friends were kissing on her. It's wrong and it's disgusting and I don't like it. I just can't stand being in the same room as her. If my mom doesn't change, I'm gonna have to cut her out of my life. Did you know the camera was on when those were taken? Yeah. Okay, so you find those embarrassing, okay? And you don't want to live with your mother at this point? No. Okay, and your mother says that's because your grandmother has poisoned you against your mother by filling your head with a bunch of bad things about your mom. Yeah. Is that true? No, not at all. I choose not to live with my mom. Do you think that your the things that your daughter is citing in terms of your Facebook posts and behaviors, that sort of thing, do you believe that maybe those things are inappropriate or in our embarrassment to her that her mother's doing that? Yeah, I really do <clears throat> see how that is inappropriate. They actually took, you know, the worst photos of me and are generalizing it that that's the way I, I am. Well, this is what she is choosing. To, to tell us is representative of what embarrasses her. I do regret that. Okay, were you drunk? No. You put a whole bunch of pictures on Facebook. How is that <clears throat> embarrassing to you when you uploaded a whole bunch of them? Okay, well, here's one. Uh, on October 25th, uh, you said, My birthday. Oh, my. Champagne martini and wine. I may not have panties, but I've got alcohol. Happy birthday to me. And I can explain that. I understand you lost your luggage. You're, I lost my apparently luggage. Apparently, you where you weren't wearing panties no, when I you was. lost your luggage? I, I was wearing, <clears throat> I was wearing panties. Okay. I, I can see how it is taken in such a bad way and that is really not what I meant. And this is your Facebook 2008. post? 2008. Exactly, my, exactly my point because that means she was 10 and her mother is posting needs to get some. When, wow. she's, when she's 10. That's disgusting. Uh, then here we come, two years later, really, really wants to meet a hot guy, laugh out loud. Serious though, really. Weren't you married during that, 2010? Yes. Is Look, working I'm not on perfect, my I admit, I have made mistakes. He's talking. It, it's a pattern across time. These aren't isolated, this is across time. And she's saying this is embarrassing. I'm just asking, does she have a valid point? Yes, yeah, she does. I ask you if you thought you grew up in an unstable situation. You said yes. Absolutely. You, she said, oh, no, she didn't. She only went to like two schools and no, you no. rattled off eight. No. She kept getting in trouble at the schools that she was with and they would ask that she leave the school. You know, I always she find it interesting when in parents talk grade. about their children as though they had nothing to do with who they oh, became. Oh, no, I, I'm sure I had a lot to do with who she became. I mean, I know that alcoholism runs in my family. It yeah. runs in her father's family. Well, I put together a little compilation of where you've lived. Um, okay? Uh, You're born in 96 and you live with your dad. And at age 7, in 03, you move in with your mom. Okay? At age 10, you move in with your dad. Then at 11, you move back in with your mom. Then at age 12, you move back in with your dad. Then at age 14, you move in with your dad's mom. Then you move in with Rachel. Then you move back in with your dad. So in that one year, you're with your dad's mom, then with Rachel, then with your dad. Then in the next year, you move back in with Rachel. Then the next year, you move in with your grandmother. Then the next year, you move back in with Rachel. And then six months later, eight months later, you move in with your grandmother. So I'm counting here from age seven across, you've been bouncing around back and forth. The reason Abby moved out of Rachel's the first time 
was because Rachel told Abby, I have some friends coming in town. You need to find yourself a place to stay. Wow, that is so not true. Is that true, Abby? Yeah. yeah. You told me your friends were coming and I needed to go find somewhere else to stay, meaning stay at Nana's because they were going to use my room or my bathroom. Abby, I would not just kick you out of the house. Rachel, you did. Okay. How old were you? Um, I was 17. 17. You did not want to live with me because you were grounded and you said you didn't like the way that Brad and I were treating you. You took all the pictures down of me in, my, in the house. Every picture, Rachel. No, it was couple. not every he picture. He took down every picture. Do you live in my house? No, you Abby. don't. You don't live in my he house. He took down every single picture. No, he of did not. This is not true. You totally ignored her. That is not yes, true. Yes, it is true. You weren't there. Abby was. You don't come to me with any of this. And why don't I come we to you? We get along fine when it's just you and I together. When you came over a couple weeks ago to get your stuff, I was you gave with me you. a I didn't hug, you were nice. You're only this way with me when you're around That's her. That's not true. I don't want to sit in your house when I don't feel comfortable and argue with you. We have not argued in so long. You ask me all the time, are you still mad at me? Are we okay? No. Like, you don't. And why don't you say something? I have. And then you keep texting me, and you keep texting me, and then you never leave me alone. Oh, these texts are interesting. We're going to find out why Rachel thinks her mom is using money to control Abby when we come back. Rachel got a job working for one of the medical clinics. She started abusing pain pills really bad. She began writing her own prescriptions in her name. She got charged with trafficking. My mom and I got in so many fights when I was younger. There was one time when I was about 21. It was Mother's Day. Rachel came home that morning and she was obviously high on cocaine. She like jerked around to go into her bedroom and I grabbed her arm. I got tired of being slapped and I started hitting back. She pushed me and I pushed her bedroom door and she I guess hit her head on the door. The police were called. She told them that I was beating her up. But they did say one of us had to go to jail. I told them that they could take me. The next morning and I walked home. She didn't even bother showing up to drive me home. I guess she's still holding on to that one. Well, that was Dixie talking about her daughter Rachel's outrageous, violent behavior after a night of excessive partying. Now, are you clean and sober at this point? Absolutely. So are you taking Suboxone? I am. Are you taking Ambien? Uh, yeah, because I do have insomnia. Um, are you drinking? I might drink once, twice a week at the most. I'm the most boring person you have ever met. Ask anybody that knows me. Ask my husband. Ask look my at friends. The pictures. Well, I'm asking you. You're taking the that absolute worst boring. of the worst and making it look like that's how I am all the time. Rachel, you drink well, what I'm asking day. you. I drink every day, yes. and you know this how? Because I, I haven't talked to you in eight months. I haven't seen and you. Why is that? You don't know me. Why is, uh, you're right. I don't know well, you. I'm you asking just, you. I you, don't know you. I really do not drink that often. I really don't. Well, it's like I know that's really bad, so I don't do it very often. It's interesting how you two don't talk, but you do text sometimes, right? She She's always not blocked initiates you. it. Yes. I'm sorry? She initiates the text. Uh, and I, I found this to be really interesting. I, I just kind of filled up the screen with some of this. I see that your battery was up. I wish it wasn't. Um, Rachel, you say you're taking my kid and you wonder why I hate you? Really? You get help, you narcissistic bitch. Blocked. Bye. Dixie says, I'm not taking her. She's making the choice, and blocking me doesn't phase me at all. You did that years ago. I helped support your ass until three years ago, and you were 35. And don't ever try to tell me what I can and cannot do. Remember your place, and go have another drink. I mean, every word. But it's very obvious when Rachel starts texting whether she's drinking or not. Because if she's not drinking, she's halfway nice. If so remember drinking. your place and go have mm -hmm. another drink. So, Rachel, you said, okay, go have another surgery and pop another pill and go adopt another kid you can't raise. You're the joke here, not me. She accused me of having um, rotator cuff surgery just to get pain pills. Yeah. So, Dixie, that. you say, so let me get this right. She's using me and I'm using her. It's so obvious when you're drinking. 
Oh, yeah, well, I'm drinking, and I'm 38 damn years old on vacation with a mother like you. It's a wonder I'm not every day. Your own sisters feel bad for me because I had you as a role model growing up. None of your own family will even talk to you. They know what a bitch you are and said it's a wonder I turned out halfway normal, so I don't know why I'm even talking to you. You don't deserve the gum on the bottom of my shoe. Wouldn't want anything from you, and I speak to my sisters all the time, so get your drink on, pantyless. I'm just glad my sisters know nothing about your alcohol and drug problem. I'm so ashamed of you. You're an embarrassment. And yes, bitch, your own sisters don't like you. Go have another surgery, you hypochondriac, and get some more pain meds, and get someone to do everything for you. So you're old and feeble. You can't even do anything for yourself. And it gets better. Oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> Rachel says, seriously, what's your malfunction? You got what you wanted. You win. You got Abby hating me again because you twist everything in your own head. You're sick. You're the most demented person. Sorry, you're not even a person. You're an evil bitch. Someone really needs to lock you up somewhere. You do so much damage to people you can't even see it. I mean, it, it just goes on and on and on. You're going to die lonely, and it's all you're doing. You made your own bed, now you have to lie These were all it. initiated by I'm Rachel. I'm not proud of any of that. She just, she's got a way that just makes me so angry. But you initiated these, Rachel. You started this whole conversation. Well, you certainly took the bait, didn't you? I'm bad at it. Dr. Phil, I am bad at it. She knows how to push every button What's that? I Me and my have. papa tell her all the time, don't reply, because I papa has to tell me not to reply to mom. Like, we should just ignore it, and she's really bad at it. Well, Rachel admits that she hasn't always been a great mom, and Dixie says Rachel's criminal past hasn't helped matters. We'll be right back. Well... We're talking to Rachel today, whose daughter Abby and mother Dixie both agree Rachel's mothering skills, um, well, they just leave a lot to be desired, according to them. Instead of making cookies, Rachel has spent a lot of her life partying, according to her mother Dixie, who talks about Rachel as though she has absolutely nothing to do with who she turned out to be. No, I don't true. get that. But Rachel says she is not a bad mother, it's Dixie. Who's the problem? My mom's values are all wrong. My mom's so manipulative, it's like she's the puppet master. Everything seems to be about money with my mom. My mother's trying to bribe my daughter by buying her things. She dangles cell phones, cars, and rent-free living in front of my daughter. My mom takes pride in controlling things and wants everybody to know that she wears the pants. My mom bought Abby an iPhone. She wanted to be able to reach Abby whenever she wanted. When Abby stopped answering every single call from my mother, she took the phone back. She checks my daughter's bank account on a regular basis. She is like a drill sergeant. She just has to be the one in control. My mom is not a good role model for my daughter. She doesn't know what the concept of a family is. My mom has turned my daughter against me. She should be telling Abby, your mom loves you so much. Your mom really cares about you. Well, you know, Abby, I'm, uh, I'm really sorry that you're caught in the middle of this. And I always have um, two rules I follow with children, and one of them is... You don't ever involve them in adult issues. And uh, your grandmother has involved you in adult issues. Your mother has involved you in adult issues. Dr. Phil, I'm sorry, but that's not true. Well, Abby I'm sorry, to, but I just disagree. Abby comes to me with things her mother has done. Yeah. I don't go to her because I don't know what And what do you doing, do? Rachel? You say, yeah, your mom really is a piece of crap. No, Instead I, of saying, you know no, what, I she probably made not. a mistake. No, she loves you. But, Rachel, you've been making mistakes since this baby but was born. But you forward. know how much I love Abby she, and care about her. Mommy is Have not you taking ever... care of her. You can't just take care of her with love. No, you have to 
open your wallet. No, it's not your wallet, Rachel. It's your heart. You know nothing about that. I don't know you. No, you don't. I, I don't want to know you. Okay. I don't want to know you. That's why three years ago I said, you're poison to me. I can't be around you. She had gotten me to the point where I was physically ill. She doesn't sit here and down you 24-7, and that's what you think because you guys argue all the time. She's told me many times you love me. I know that you love me, but I, I, I do come to her with the text message that you send me when Papa's home because... Why I didn't you come to no, me and say, Mom? Because every time she comes to you, I you tell her to you ask for it. Okay, what did, all right, when I saw that Facebook post about you not having your underwear, who did I text first? You. And then you blamed it on Nana. I didn't I blame it on Yes, you her. did. Yes, you oh, did. Yes, you I texted did. you and you were like, Nana's just twisting words around in your mouth and you know that's not true. Yeah, because you guys acted like I'm running around with no underwear. If I go on and, Facebook I mean, and I see that, it looks like you don't have underwear on. Sorry, but that's not my problem. You posted that If you look that, at my post disgusting. before that, I don't you need would to see where my Facebook. luggage How was How do you lost? lose your and luggage you when you're driving? Do you think that is seriously the issue here? No, I don't think it's Do you really think how? But she I would, lost no, her luggage. I would just issue. like to know how do you lose your luggage? Okay, when you're that's how you want to somewhere. spend your time. No, here. it's not how. I want okay, to spend then my let's time. withdraw I want the her question. To get some help. Abby says all of her mother's problems stem from Rachel's addiction and her irresponsible behavior. Take a look. I was 12 when my mom went to prison. Rachel got a job working for one of the medical clinics. She started abusing pain pills really bad. She began writing her own prescriptions in her name. She got charged with trafficking. Rachel was placed in the county jail. We got her one of the best attorneys in town. She got work release, and then they had caught her with pills. She got caught sneaking drugs back into the facility. They revoked her probation. She was sent away for a year. I was very, very sad for Abby. My mom acted really weird when she got out because she didn't really know who I was. She missed a lot. Rachel never expressed any remorse for what she had done. Here's the issue. I truly believe that this battle between the two of you is hurting Abby. Dr. Phillips, like I said, though, this just started when Rachel was in prison. I'm sorry. Okay, and your point is? My point is... Your point is, is therefore, it's not impacting no, her today? No, no, Okay, so what my, is your point? She needs some help. Okay, that's she your point? She's been an addict since before Abby was born. Mm -hmm. She has drank. And I'm seeing an addiction specialist every month. They haven't talked in a long time, if you can't tell. Yeah, they're catching up, aren't they? Yeah. Well, this next, Rachel says Abby will move in with anyone who offers her a free place to live with oh, no rules. God. self-entitled and she acts spoiled. Abby learned how to use situations to get what she wanted. Abby living at my mom's house is very frustrating because I know she is over there doing what she wants to do when she wants to do it. In an all-new Dr. Phil. Can she help her troubled son? I'm not going to feel better till he's dead. And protect her family? Do you think he could hurt or kill one of his siblings? That's tomorrow. She is my mom's slave. She's my mom's bitch. My mom's got an eight-year-old and a 15-year-old running around. Abby runs her errands, cooks dinner, cleans the house, takes care of the kids. No wonder you want Abby there so bad. Abby should be focusing on finishing school and getting into college. She needs to be starting her own life and not focus so much on my mom's household. Well, Abby says she recently moved in with her grandmother, Dixie, because her mother, Rachel, was too busy working and hanging out with friends. But Rachel says that Abby is manipulative and will live with anyone who pays her bills and has no rules. I think Abby's a good kid, but I think her priorities are just a little bit messed up. My daughter is self-entitled and she acts spoiled. Abby learned how to use situations to get what she wanted. She's learned manipulative behavior from bouncing from home to home. She kind of goes wherever things are easy for her at the time. Abby living at my mom's house is 
very frustrating because I know she is over there doing what she wants to do when she wants to do it. I want my daughter to value family over material possessions. I love her with all my heart. I would do anything in the world for her. But my mom just feels the need to like take all that away. What do you want to see happen? I want Forget my, about them for a second. Just tell me what you want to see happen. My mom to stop blaming everybody else. Yes, I do run errands, but I mean, my Nana does pay for a lot since I don't work that much, since I am trying to go back to school. So you have no idea, and you're starting to piss me off because you have no idea. You think you know everything, but you don't. I could say the same. Okay, that's your problem with her. Me acting spoiled, that is wrong. What's your plan? Where, where do you want to be five years from now? I want to be graduated from college and I want to be on my own where I don't need anybody else's help and mm -hmm. I don't want to be somebody's bitch, as you say now. I want to be able to support myself on my own and not have to ask for anything so they don't argue like this and accuse each other of everything. Mm -hmm. And I want my mom to stop blaming everybody else for her problems. You can roll your eyes all you want. That's all you ever do. It's mind. never your fault. It's always someone else's. I'm not blaming anyone for anything. Who am I blaming and what am I blaming them for? So what you want is to achieve some independence mm -hmm. and some productivity in your life. Because, you know, we've got an old saying in Texas that sometimes you got to rise above your raisin. And that's really true a lot that you can grow up with some things that don't work real well uh, and you can either continue that legacy or you can choose to go in a different direction and there's no doubt that your mother has made some really bad choices in her life right uh you've gotten in trouble with drugs you've gotten in trouble with the law yeah. uh you, I, I don't think you're through with your trouble with drugs at this point. Your definition of clean and sober and my definition of clean and sober are diametrically opposed. Uh, I mean, honestly, from where I came from, you know, 10 years ago, I'm do see, that's the problem. I never get any credit for as far as I've come. I'll give you credit, but you say from where you come from, but you just admit it on stage that you're doing Suboxone and drinking. Doing Suboxone. I'm and taking drinking. a medication and I've drinking. prescribed. They can kill you, Rachel. Okay. It can second. kill you. What, uh, tell me what your objective was for uh, interrupting my dialogue with your daughter. Tell me I'm what it was you wanted. That I'm going to hear one day that my daughter is dead. Okay, and so you have someone having a clinically directed conversation with her. I'm sorry. And you, I you think that's a really good time no, to jump not. in and tell her no, how it's badly not. she's but doing? She's just in denial about everything. Okay. Well, how about this? How about you've <laughs> had your shot? How about give me a minute to talk to her? You, know, you can be an addict, and you can be an alcoholic, but you don't have to be a hypocrite. Okay. You can be honest with yourself, and you can be honest with your caregivers. Okay. And what we know right now is that there are some major portions of your life that aren't working the way you want them to work. We know you have some health issues, right? Yeah. And those have to be dealt with. We know you have some relationship issues with your daughter, and those have to be Definitely. dealt with. And we know that you have some family issues with your mother, and those have to be dealt with. Right. And you can decide that you want to be right or you can decide that you want to be happy. And you get defensive because you get a lot of criticism. And anybody that gets a lot of criticism is going to reflexively get defensive. I get that. All I want you to do is be very honest with yourself in making a legitimate to-do list. If you are 
dealing with narcotics right now and Suboxone and Ambien and alcohol are dangerous and I, I think you need to evaluate those things and that doesn't mean that you don't have some legitimate issues that you're having to deal with and you need help with those I'm not saying you don't Okay. But there are better ways to deal with that that don't make you vulnerable to relapsing into a really bad drug state. And I, I think you're really playing with fire right now. I'm just telling you the truth. I think you're playing with fire right now. I think emotionally, you've got a, a, a really damaged situation here with your daughter. And I think that needs to be cleaned up. This situation with your mother... I don't know whether that's going to get better in the near term or whether it's not. Right now, this is a competition, and she appears to be the prize, and that's not good because what it actually turns into is you become a rope in a tug-of-war. It's always whose back am I going to have, either yours or Nana's, or whose side am I on? See, that's not fair to you. I don't you. want you to be on any that's side. That's not fair to you. That's like being a child of divorce where you're kind of pulled between yeah, the two. Yeah, I had that with Mom and Dad, too. Of course. And, so it, and that's why when I look at your timeline bouncing back and forth, and there was an interesting theme that the two of you might be interested in knowing, is the one thing that you've talked about a lot is that when you felt like you wanted to move or you need to make a change, it was because you felt lonely. You felt lonely. Yeah. You were at your dad's, you'd be feeling lonely. You'd be at your mom's, you were feeling lonely. You'd feel lonely, lonely, lonely. And so you're just looking for somewhere to belong. And you're dealing with some issues there that are complicated by this dynamic and these two have a lot of history and a lot of finger pointing that has nothing to do with you and uh, we're going to take a break and I'm, I'm going to tell everybody here just one two three what I think needs to happen to give this family a chance to heal we'll be right back Rachel, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start with you and tell you that I think that right now healing a relationship with your mother should not be at the top of your list. I, I'm, I just honest, I'm just honest to tell you that. I, I hope that comes, but I, I tell you that the relationship that you need to work on first is the one you have with yourself. Because I said you don't want to be a hypocrite. You don't want to be a hypocrite. Relationship power comes from personal power, and I, I, I really think you want to do better. I think you want to get healthy in every sense of the word, and I think you want to have a good relationship with your daughter. But you've got to get yourself together first, and at this point, I, I don't think that's where you are, and I don't think that's how you feel, and I, I, I want to really help you get to a point where you have a, a personal grip on where you are and what your to-do list needs to be for you. And I think that means that you need to be evaluated mentally, emotionally, biochemically, physically, in every way to figure out where you are. W wouldn't you like to know how to have a conversation with her about having gone to prison and about becoming a drug addict and about not being there a lot of the times, wouldn't you like to know what to say to her to help her accommodate to that and to hit the reset button and move forward? Wouldn't you like to have some of the dialogue that would help you do that? Yeah, definitely. That's what I'm saying I would like to help you do. And I would like to do that with you first and then begin a step at a time with her second. And then as that rounds out, there's going to be a lot that has to be done uh, with your mother. I very much want to help you a as a child of divorce and a, a child of uh, a an addicted parent and a, a child of all the things that you've been through. There are some things that you can learn that help you know how to position that. And I, and I want to get you that help and provide you that because I think you will learn 
to not hold yourself responsible for all of this and a whole lot of other things that will keep you from being distracted as you move forward in the pursuit of your life goals. And, and I want to help do that. And I think if we start there, then we'll get to the rest of this as we move forward. Fair enough? Okay, that's what we'll do. I want to thank all of my guests today. Log on to drphil.com and share your thoughts on our message boards. You can also find me on Facebook and Twitter using hashtag Dr. Phil. We'll see you next time. Thank you so much. Eight damn years old on vacation with a mother like you. It's a wonder I'm not every day. Your own sisters feel bad for me because I had you as a role model growing up. None of your own family will even talk to you. They know what a bitch you are and said it's a wonder I turned out halfway normal, so I don't know why I'm even talking to you. You don't deserve the gum on the bottom of my shoe. Wouldn't want anything from you, and I speak to my sisters all the time, so get your drink on, pantyless. <laughs> I'm just glad my sisters know nothing about your alcohol and drug problem. I'm so ashamed of you. You're an embarrassment. And yes, bitch, your own sisters don't like you. Go have another surgery, you hypochondriac, and get some more pain meds, and get someone to do everything for you. So you're old and feeble. You can't even do anything for yourself. And it gets better. Oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> Rachel says, seriously, what's your malfunction? You got what you wanted. You win. You got Abby hating me again. Because you twist everything in your own head. You're sick. You're the most demented person. Sorry, you're not even a person. You're an evil bitch. Someone really needs to lock you up somewhere. You do so much damage to people. I don't know whether that's going to get better in the near term or whether it's not. Right now, this is a competition and she appears to be the prize. And that's not good because what it actually turns into is you become a rope in a tug of war. It's always whose back am I going to have, either yours or Nana's, or whose side am I on? See, that's not fair to you. I don't you. want you to be on any that's side. That's not fair to you. That's like being a child of divorce where you're kind of pulled between yeah, the two. Yeah, I had that with Mom and Dad, too. Of course. And, so it, and that's why when I look at your timeline bouncing back and forth, and there was an interesting theme that the two of you might be interested in knowing, is the one thing that you've talked about a lot is that when you felt like you wanted to move or you need to make a change, it was because you felt lonely. You felt lonely. Yeah. If you were at your dad's, you'd be feeling lonely. If you'd be at your mom's, you were feeling lonely. You'd feel lonely, lonely, lonely. And so you're just looking for somewhere to belong. And you're dealing with some issues there that are complicated by this dynamic and these two have a lot of history and a lot of finger pointing that has nothing to do with you and I, we're going to take a break and I'm, I'm going to tell everybody here just one two three what I think needs to happen the police were called she told them that I was beating her up but they did say one of us had to go to jail. I told them that they could take me. The next morning and I walked home. She didn't even bother showing up to drive me home. I guess she's still holding on to that one. Well, that was Dixie talking about her daughter Rachel's outrageous, violent behavior after a night of excessive partying. Now, are you clean and sober at this point? Absolutely. So, are you taking Suboxone? I am. Are you taking Ambien? Uh, yeah, because I do have insomnia. Um, are you drinking? I might drink once, twice a week at the most. I'm the most boring person you have ever met. Ask anybody that knows me. Ask my husband. Ask look my at friends. The pictures. Well, I'm asking you. You're taking the that absolute worst boring. of the worst and making it look like that's how I am all the time. Richie, you drink well, what I'm asking day. you. I drink every day, yes. and you know this how? Because I, I haven't talked to you in eight months. I haven't seen and you. Why is that? You don't know me. Why is, uh, you're right. I don't know well, you. I'm you asking just, you. I you, don't know you. I really do not drink that often. I really don't. Well, it's like I know that's really bad, so I don't do it very often. It's interesting how you two don't talk, but you do text sometimes, right? She She's always not blocked initiates you. it. Yes. I'm sorry. She initiates the text. Uh, and I, I found this 
My sister treating this child like that. That's tomorrow. Those priorities have always been screwed up. I get bills here for her all the time that are passed to. Rachel is always immaculate. Her hair is always done. Her nails are always done. She keeps up her massage membership. And yet, the bills don't get paid. Well, Grandma Dixie says her daughter Rachel drove her daughter Abby away because of her bad parenting and partying. Abby says she is fed up with Rachel not being there as a mom. I pretty much hate my mom. My mom is very self-centered. She is a narcissist. My mom feeds off drama and chaos. My mom has called me many names before. She would call me a spoiled brat, tell me I'm only living with my grandparents because they have money. She recently told me I get the trophy for a worse child. My mom did not know how to raise me. She was never home. She was out with her friends or with her husband. I never had any boundaries. She never cared what I did. I felt really alone. My mom dresses like a 16-year-old. She loves to show skin. People just look at her like, how old are you? What are you wearing? My mom posted a picture of her dressed up as Miley Cyrus on Halloween in the little bear costume. She posted a picture of her on a stripper pole. My mom posted a picture of a bunch of drinks on the table, and her caption was, I might not have my... That. All I want you to do is be very honest with yourself in making a legitimate to-do list. If you are dealing with narcotics right now and Suboxone and Ambien and alcohol are dangerous and I, I think you need to evaluate those things. And that doesn't mean that you don't have some legitimate issues that you're having to deal with and you need help with those not saying you don't okay. but there are better ways to deal with that that don't make you vulnerable to relapsing into a really bad drug state and I, I think you're really playing with fire right now I'm just telling you the truth I think you're playing with fire right now I think emotionally you've got a, a, a really damaged situation here with your daughter and yeah. I think that needs to be cleaned up. This situation with your mother, I don't know whether that's going to get better in the near term or whether it's not. Right now, this is a competition and she appears to be the prize and that's not good because what it actually turns into is you become a rope in a tug of war. It's always whose back am I going to have, either yours or Nana's, or whose side am I on? See, that's not fair to you. I don't you. want you to be on any that's side. That's not fair to you. That's like... She'll admit she was a party girl when she was younger and often wasn't around for her own child. Her daughter, Abby, is now 18 years old and says she was basically raised by her grandmother, Dixie, because Rachel was out living the high life. But now Rachel is in her late 30s, married and claims that things have changed. Her mother, Dixie, disagrees. She says Rachel is still bar hopping and stays out all night like a single 21-year-old. My daughter is a selfish bitch. Abby's whole childhood has been without a mother. Drugs and alcohol got in the way. They've always come first. Even after spending a year in prison, her addiction never stopped. She's very narcissistic. Rachel would go out and have a couple of drinks and leave Abby alone with no dinner. Rachel has always felt entitled. And she's very materialistic. Rachel's an extremely manipulative person. She's always been able to play the victim and play it very, very well. She knows how to get what she wants out of me. She's come to me, Mom, I can't pay my rent. Mom, I can't pay my electric bill. Like, we've paid legal fees. We have easily spent close to $400,000 on Rachel since she turned 21. For some reason, Rachel has some really deep hatred for me. My last text from her told me what a despicable human being I was. I was a <laughs> Rachel. She's just got pure venom. My mom's voice sounds like a demon to me. <laughs> it sounds awful. My mom has this air of superiority about her. She's up here. Everybody else is down here. My mom is mean and nasty to people. I call my mom a lot of names, but she just gets me so angry. I don't know why my mom judges me for what I do. I'm not this 
social butterfly party animal that my mom thinks I am. I can't tell you the last time I was in a club. I don't even really own dresses. I'm the most boring person. I do not use any kind of drugs. I'm not a freaking alcoholic. I don't even know why I defend myself. In my mom's head, I'm always gonna be an alcoholic. So you know what? I was definitely not a perfect mom, but I tried the best that I possibly could. My mom acts like she won. She acts like Abby picked her over me. My mom needs to get her act together before I'm gonna be in her life again. Your mother says that the reason that you are not and cannot be a mother is that you are a drug addict, an alcoholic, and mentally ill. That you are just too narcissistic to be a mother. And by that, I think she means that you are just so self-absorbed and so... I mean, honestly, from where I came from, you know, 10 years ago, I'm do see, that's the problem. I never get any credit for as far as I've come. I'll give you credit, but you say from where you come from, but you just admit it on stage that you're doing Suboxone and drinking. Doing Suboxone. I'm and taking drinking. a medication and I've drinking. prescribed. They can kill you, Rachel. Okay. It can second. kill you. What, uh, tell me what your objective was for uh, interrupting my dialogue with your daughter. Tell me I'm what it was you wanted. I'm I'm going to hear one day that my daughter is dead. Okay, and so you have someone having a clinically directed conversation with her. I'm sorry, And you, I you think that's a really good time no, to jump not. in and tell her no, how badly not. she's but doing. But she's just in denial about everything. Okay. Well, how about this? How about you've had <laughs> your shot? How about give me a minute to talk to her? You, know, you can be an addict, and you can be an alcoholic, but you don't have to be a hypocrite. Okay. You can be honest with yourself, and you can be honest with your caregivers. With your mother, I don't know whether that's going to get better in the near term or whether it's not. Right now, this is a competition, and she appears to be the prize. And that's not good because what it actually turns into is you become a rope in a tug of war. It's always whose back am I going to have, either yours or Nana's, or whose side am I on? See, that's not fair to you. I don't you. want you to be on any that's side. That's not fair to you. That's like being a child of divorce where you're kind of pulled between yeah, the two. Yeah, I had that with Mom and Dad, too. Of course. And, so it, and that's why when I look at your timeline bouncing back and forth, and there was an interesting theme that the two of you might be interested in knowing is... The one thing that you've talked about a lot is that when you felt like you wanted to move or you need to make a change, it was because you felt lonely. You felt lonely. Yeah. You were at your dad's, you'd be feeling lonely. You'd be at your mom's, you were feeling lonely. You'd feel lonely, lonely, lonely. And so you're just looking for somewhere to belong. And you're dealing with some issues there that are complicated by this dynamic. And these two have a lot of history and a lot of finger pointing that has nothing to do with you. And I, we're going to take a break. And I'm, I'm going to tell everybody here just one, two, three, what I think. My mom. My mother's trying to bribe my daughter by buying her things. She dangles cell phones, cars, and rent free living in front of my daughter. My mom takes pride in controlling things and wants everybody to know that she wears the pants. My mom bought Abby an iPhone. She wanted to be able to reach Abby whenever she wanted. When Abby stopped answering every single call from my mother, she took the phone back. She checks my daughter's bank account on a regular basis. She is like a drill sergeant. She just has to be the one in control. My mom is not a good role model for my daughter. She doesn't know what the concept of a family is. My mom has turned my daughter against me. She should be telling Abby, your mom loves you so much. Your mom really cares about you. Well, you know, Abby, I'm, uh, I'm really sorry 
that you're caught in the middle of this. And I always have um, two rules I follow with children, and one of them is you don't ever involve them in adult issues. And uh, your grandmother has involved you in adult issues. Your mother has involved you in adult issues. Dr. Phil, I'm sorry, but that's not true. Well, Abby I'm sorry, but I just disagree. Abby comes to me with things her mother has done. Yeah. I don't go to her because I don't know what And what do you do? Rachel. You say, yeah, your mom really is a piece of crap. No, Instead I, of saying, you know no, what, I she probably pretty about her. She's up here. Everybody else is down here. My mom is mean and nasty to people. I call my mom a lot of names, but she just gets me so angry. I don't know why my mom judges me for what I do. I'm not this social butterfly party animal that my mom thinks I am. I can't tell you the last time I was in a club. I don't even really own dresses. I'm the most boring person. I do not use any kind of drugs. I'm not a freaking alcoholic. I don't even know why I defend myself. In my mom's head, I'm always gonna be an alcoholic. So you know what? I was definitely not a perfect mom, but I tried the best that I possibly could. My mom acts like she won. She acts like Abby picked her over me. My mom needs to get her act together before I'm gonna be in her life again. Your mother says that the reason that you are not and cannot be a mother is that you are a drug addict, an alcoholic, and mentally ill, that you are just too narcissistic to be a mother. And by that, I think she means that you are just so self-absorbed and so self-involved that you can't possibly be focused on someone else. I'm wondering how she knows that because I haven't been in her life.